we were discussing previously free undamped motions. For the spring mass systems or uh, harmonic motions. So today we are going to, uh, previously we discussed free undamped motions. So today we are going to discuss free damped motions. In the spring mass systems. What is uh, undamped and damped? damped? Damping forces are basically uh, retarding forces or frictional forces, uh, which acts on the motion of the body. So as I told you, that if we have uh, a spring attached to a rigid uh, wall or, or a rigid support, After attaching an object of mass M with this spring, uh, its original length is, uh, for example, L. This is length L. And there is an extension uh, of S in the spring. Okay. We assume that. <clears throat> there are uh, two forces which are acting on uh, this spring, which is the restoring force one. And the second is uh, the weight, which is due to the mass of uh, this body. It's a weight force. There are two forces acting on this uh, spring. Okay. Uh, in the equilibrium position, we, we, we said that according to Hooke's law, that W is equal to Fs. Now, further, for the free undamped motions, we pull down this mass further to a length X, length X, and then release that mass, uh, release that body. Then there'll be a motion, to and fro motion, uh, or you can say up and down motion. And we discussed uh, these kind of motions, which are called free and damped motion. In this, in this motion, we assume that there are no retarding or friction, friction forces acting on this object of mass M, which try to stop its motion or slow down its motion. For example, retarding forces uh, could be uh, the air because the air definitely would, would act as a frictional force, which definitely would reduce or uh, reduce the, the, the amplitude of the oscillations while this uh, object is moving up and down. So we discussed some other forces as well. <clears throat> For example, this object is immersed in a fluid then there'll be definitely uh, a retarding force which slow down its oscillation. So this was uh, free and damped motion. We assume that there are no retarding forces. Now today we are going to uh, discuss free damped motions. Damping forces are in fact, <clears throat> damping forces are in fact also called friction forces friction force. Okay, <laughs> if we assume that there's a friction force which uh, act as uh, a retarding forces which try to reduce the amplitude of uh, oscillations of this uh, moving object, then uh, that retarding force or friction force uh, is usually denoted by Fc and is and is assumed to be proportional to uh, the velocity velocity of uh, the object at any time t. 
Okay, in most realistic systems, uh, we assume that this retarding force, this frictional force is proportional to the velocity of uh, that moving object of mass m. And it is all, this force is always negative because it will always act uh, opposite to the motion of that body, okay? So definitely whenever we remove this uh, proportionality sign, we put here some constant in negative times dx by dt, okay? Where beta is uh, the constant of proportionality and negative sign here represents that this frictional force or retarding force or damping force definitely would act against the motion of this moving body. So uh, this is the frictional force or damping force acting on the system. We assume that this is the only force acting on the system in addition to uh, this restoring force and this weight of the body, weight force. Now, again, using the Newton's second law, what was Newton's second law? We, we applied it uh, for the previous case, three undamped motions. Newton's second law, we apply here. What is the Newton's second law? It was F is equal to MA, or you can say M D square X by the T square is equal to negative K time um, X. This was the Newton's second law for the free undamped motion. Now we are adding here another force, which is the damping force. Um, in the sec Newton's second law to get this thing. Now, we can bring this, these two terms on, on this side and we obtain d square x by dt square uh, minus plus maybe beta dx by dt plus k times x is equal to zero. Uh, further, we can divide this equation throughout by m to obtain dx square, d square x by dt square plus beta by m Okay, and dx by dt plus k by m x is equal to zero. Okay, further, uh, we assume that d square x by dt square uh, plus two lambda dx by dt plus, uh, it was assumed uh, omega in the previous exam, in the previous case for the free undamped motion. Here, notice that we have assumed beta by m is equal to uh, two lambda, where uh, two lambda is equal to beta by m and omega is k by m. Here we assume two here, two lambda, just to simplify our, uh, simplify, the process of finding roots in this equation, okay? What is this? This is uh, a second order ODE with constant coefficient. It's a linear equation uh, as well as it is homogeneous differential equation. So in order to solve it, we have to find its roots, okay? Uh, first of all, we write a characteristic equation. Characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial which I hope you can write directly from here, m square minus two lambda m plus omega, uh, that's it, equal to zero. Here, <coughs> sorry, here we have omega, huh, t. Now, this is a polynomial of degree two in m. Now, uh, you can see here, here we have plus, yes. Uh, here, why I have, uh, written two lambda here instead of lambda. Now you can see that <clears throat> the roots of this equation will easily be calculated. M is negative B plus minus square root of uh, B square 
minus four a is nothing a c four omega and we also also here we assume that this is mega square i think huh? omega square assume that thanks to nahi omega hi hai theek acha omega uh nahi mega square isko assume karte hain प्रीवियसली हमने ओमेगा स्केयर किया था इसका क्वेश्चन अच्छा हाँ के के था इट वाज के बाय एम को हमने ओमेगा स्केयर स्क्यूम किया था सो दिस शुड बी ओमेगा स्केयर जस्ट टू बेसिकली सिंप्लीफाई द नोटेशन हियर सो हेयर विल हैव ओमेगा स्केयर सो हेयर वी हैव ओमेगा स्केयर हेयर वी हैव टू लेट Now, divided by two a. What is a? A is nothing. Now you can see that this is m. It has two roots now, plus minus. Uh, let me write the roots here separately. We can take common from four from here uh, to obtain minus two lambda plus minus. Here we have two plus minus two here. Because uh, we take four common here, which comes out of the square root and becomes two. So this is lambda square minus omega square divided by two. Now this two can be cancelled with this one and this one. And what do we obtain here? <laughs> uh, M is basically it is nothing but minus lambda plus minus square root of lambda square minus omega square. So this, these are the roots of uh, uh, characteristic polynomial in this case uh, of three damped motions. Now, I hope you understand why I have uh, or why I have chosen here two lambda just to cancel this two with this two. Okay, I, I took four common from here and then two common from here and to, in order to cancel uh, two in the denominator. So the roots are. relatively simple now we can study them easily now the roots could be real real and distinct roots could be real and repeated and roots could be complex there are three cases here so in the case one it's basically a case of over damped motion over damped motion uh what is it in this case uh this thing lambda square minus omega square is greater than 0 what does it mean what is the lambda lambda is nothing but uh it is beta over 2m okay it is beta over 2m because uh two lambda is beta over m so we divided two here in order to obtain lambda beta over two so it is square uh square square minus omega square is what it is k by m okay okay now this should be greater than 0 and uh, from here what do we obtain that uh here beta square over 4 minus k uh 4 se multiply 4 se divide kar dein multiply kar dein beta square minus 4k is greater than 0 it means beta square is greater than 4k <coughs> in short beta is sufficiently greater than k here or you can say that the lambda is greater than uh, omega here okay. if this is if lambda is greater than omega what does it mean this this implies uh, lambda is greater than omega okay this lambda and omega they must be positive because there is a negative sign uh, behind these two constants if lambda is greater than omega what does it mean that the retarding forces the frictional force is greater than 
the restoring force. Okay, if the frictional force is greater than the restoring force, then there'll be no oscillations. Okay, you just, because the force, this force, the, the force which is acting <clears throat> against uh, the motion of uh, this object is basically uh, greater than the restoring force, okay? Then there'll be no oscillations because the restoring force, it will definitely stop the motion of that uh, object. Now, if this is the case, the roots will be real and distinct, okay? If this is the case, in this case, you can say that in this case, roots of that polynomial will be real and distinct. If the roots will be real and distinct, uh, the, and the roots are what? These are the roots. Uh, then the solution should be, sorry, x of t. If the roots are real and distinct, then, then the solution should be x of t is equal to what? It should be constant e raised power negative lambda plus square root of lambda square minus omega square times t plus another constant c2, another constant c2 e raised power negative lambda minus under root uh, lambda square minus omega square times t. So this will be your solution, okay? You can take this e power minus lambda common outside of the solution. You can write e raised power negative lambda t times c1 e raised power square root of lambda square minus omega square t uh, plus c2 e raised power negative lambda square minus omega square times t. So this will be your solution, okay, uh, of that given equation. Similarly, we can add some initial conditions to this system in order to find the particular solution independent of these two unknown constants, C1 and C2. So usually the same initial conditions we apply as we have applied uh, in the case of free undamped motion that X of uh, at zero, at time zero, X of uh, zero is some X naught and X dash of zero is some x1, or you can say alpha, alpha, so it is alpha naught and this is alpha one. So these are two initial conditions on the displacement and velocity of uh, that moving object. Okay. Uh, here again, there are four cases which we had discussed in the previous lecture. The same cases are valid here in this case as well, or or all uh, do in the, all these three cases. Uh, I hope you get it. If you have any question, you, you can ask me. The next case, the case two is what? Critically damped motion. Critically damped motion. In that case, <clears throat> In that case, this should be equal to uh, equal to zero. This is equal to zero, then lambda is equal to omega. In that case, the restoring force and the friction force, they are equal, okay? In that case, the roots will be what? Real and repeated. Roots would be same, okay? In that case, the M would be what? Negative lambda only, because the other factor is zero, plus minus zero, okay? So there are two roots, but they are same roots, okay? In that case, the solution would be, in this case, the solution would be X of T is equal to, 
some constant plus another constant times t times e raised part negative lambda t. This will be your solution. Okay. And obviously, we can find uh, these unknown constants with the help of initial condition. In the third case, <coughs> If you have any question, you can ask me. You can stop me anywhere and uh, then you can ask me a question. It's uh, under damped systems, under damp motion, you can say that. What is under damp motion? In that case, the lambda square uh, minus omega square is less than zero. If it is less than zero, then the roots will be complex. There'll be two roots and they uh, would definitely be complex conjugate of each other. Uh, uh, that is a negative lambda plus minus iota square root of, uh, you can take common, negative common here, omega square minus lambda square. Okay, just to take out this out. If the roots are complex, in that case, the solution would be the solution would be x of t is equal to e raised power uh, negative lambda t times c1 cosine of under root omega square minus lambda square t plus c2 sine of square root of omega square minus lambda square t. So this will be your solution in, in, uh, in case of complex roots. This is an under damped motion. In this case, the frictional forces are less than the uh, restoring force. In this case, there will be oscillations. Okay, because the restoring force is greater than the uh, frictional or retarding forces. Okay, but in all these three cases, this frictional force will definitely uh, slow down the motion of that object and eventually the motion will stop after some time. And uh, how can we describe this factor, this, this fact, by looking at the solutions. You can see that this factor appears in all these three cases when we write the solutions, okay? Whenever T goes to infinity means when T gets large, this factor goes to, so this factor e raised bar negative uh, lambda T goes to zero. What does it mean? It means that the solution goes to, X goes to zero. X describes what? It is basically, it describes the motion of that object. It means the motion is going towards the zero. So in, in the presence of damping forces in the system, uh, the oscillations will eventually slow down and they will stop. Okay, that, in fact, this, uh, or solutions, they, agree with the physical observations of the system, okay? I hope you get it. If you have any question, you can ask me. Whenever you pull down that uh, object, it will move towards the equilibrium position, but it will stop until that. There'll be no oscillations, okay? In fact, uh, this, the, the first two cases can be described graphically in a way, in a way, whatever the motion, it starts motion, but it will definitely die out, okay? It will definitely die out immediately it will stop because the damping forces are much higher than the restoring forces, okay? This is the first case, case one. 
the motion will stop immediately. In the second case, critically that motion, there the motion, there will be oscillations, maybe a couple of, maybe a one oscillation only, but it will die out immediately again because it's a critically damped motion. Critically damped motion means if uh, there is a slight decrease in either of these two forces, for example, restoring force is less than um, the frictional force, then the motion will become over damp. Or in, in, in other case, the motion will become under damp. There will be uh, oscillations. But in this case, there'll be small kind of oscillation, but it will definitely stop after maybe one oscillation or a couple of oscillations. It depends on uh, uh, the amount of forces. Now, in, in this underdamped force, there'll be oscillations, okay? It, for example, the oscillations start from here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, but eventually it will die out. Okay, this is under damp motion. And uh, what is undamped motion? Now we are discussing damp motion. Uh, if we plot uh, the undamped motion, the oscillation oscillation would have same amplitude. This amplitude will not decrease because there are no frictional forces which uh, slow down the, the, the amplitude of oscillations. So this is undamped motion. Okay. This is under damped motion. This is critically damped motion and this is over damped motion. Okay all these three cases uh, and plus the undamped motion. In the case of undamped motion, if uh, there are no, if uh, that phenomena or you, you created the oscillations in that system in a space where there is no uh, air or any other uh, frictional forces, then that oscillation will take place un or indefinitely. It will not stop. The, the amplitude of oscillations will remain fixed and this motion will be forever. So this is the difference between undamped and these are damped, uh, these are cases of damped motion. Okay, this is the case one, this is the case two, and this is case three. Over damped, critically damped and under that. Okay. If you have any question, further questions, you can ask me. Let's do an example of uh, either of these three cases. Uh, I have included examples related to each case, but I'm going to discuss only one case here. Rest of two cases, you, you can uh, see in my notes, those examples and try, uh, try them yourself. So here is an example for the free damp motion. It, uh, it is the second case, critically damp motion. Uh, the example is, let me change the board. Example, a four feet spring measures eight feet long after a mass weighing eight pounds 
is attached to it. Four feet spring, sorry. Spring length. is L, which is four feet. A four feet spring measures eight feet long after eight feet long means its extension is what? Its extension is what eight feet means eight minus four. It is uh, four feet. This is the S extension. When uh, after a mass weighing eight pounds, mass is eight pounds attached to it. The medium through which the mass moves offers a damping force equal to square root two times the instantaneous velocity. Means uh, damping force Fc is what? It is square root two times the, the instantaneous velocity. This is what, this is the instantaneous velocity of that object. And it is under root two times this thing, which is the damping force, okay? Means the mass or the, the, that object is immersed into some kind of uh, liquid, which exert the damping force, which is proportional to the instantaneous velocity. And that constant of proportionality is under root two. Okay. Find the equation of motion if the mass is initially, we have to find the equation of motion. If the mass is initially released from equilibrium position with a downward velocity of five feet per second. What does it mean? If it is in equilibrium position, what do we have? X of zero is zero. It is, the motion has been set from the equilibrium position with the downward velocity, okay? So equilibrium position may have, it, it, it means that distance from that region is zero. And the velocity would be what? Downward velocity hai, so positive hogi. Uh, downward velocity kitni hai, five feet per second. Huh. Five feet per second. So this is our, uh, this is what we are given and we need to set up a mathematical model in order to calculate the motion of that object. G, any question? Sir, root F, shouldn't SA be minus root two dx by dt? This one? Yes. Yes, it should be negative. Okay. Thank you. Now the equation of motion is in fact for the damping <clears throat> because there is a damping force. So our equation of motion should be the m d square x by dt square uh, plus beta dx by dt plus k times x is equal to zero with the initial velocities, uh, with the initial condition given by this. Okay. Now we need to find m beta and k, okay? How can we find m? By using w is equal to mg, the weight force. The weight is given what? Eight LB, it is eight, m is m, and g is normally 32 in the uh, UK SIE units. So from here, m is what? One over four. Now, the second thing, we know that F uh, S is equal to W, okay? Now we, F S is what? It is K times uh, S is equal to M G, okay? Now, what is S? S is four, so it is four K is equal to M, M is one over four and G is 32. 8k is equal to what? 8 is 2. Okay. So k is 2, m is 1 over 4, and what is beta? Beta is under root 2. 
and the beta is under root two. So there will be no negative sign here because it will eventually go on the other side to, to become this thing positive, to make it positive. So we have m beta k, we put it here, one over four under two and two here. We'll have a second order uh, linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So we would definitely uh, have equation one by four x double dash minus plus under root two x dash plus two x is equal to zero. So this equation along with these initial condition, uh, it gives us a mathematical model which can be solved easily. Basically, negative hota is taraf aata na wo. Wo udhar ja ke fir positive ho jaata. Isi tarah ye k x us taraf hota hai negative. So this is it by ja ke positive ho jaata. So we obtain this equation. Okay. <clears throat> now this is what this is uh, a very easy problem. I hope for you you guys. You multiply four here throughout, and then you can find the roots. The roots are. Uh, this one. After solving this thing, what do we obtain? In fact, the, the equation uh, characteristic polynomial would be what m squared plus four under root two m uh, plus eight equal to zero, okay? Now the roots will be what? Negative four under root two plus minus k root four, four, 16 to the 32 and minus four AC 32. So divided by two and we obtain negative four under root two. Uh, this canceled out divided by two, which gives us negative two square root of two M. So we have obtained only one root means the roots are real and equal. We have two roots, same roots. So the solution would be x of t, uh, and it would be what? Uh, c1 plus c2 t times e to the power negative two under root two t. So this will be your solution. And what kind of motion is this? It is critically damped motion. Why? Because the roots are real and equal. If the roots of that characteristic polynomial are real and equal, then where, where we are, we are in the second case that we have critically damped motion. Okay. So, so the motion is critically damped. By looking at the roots of that characteristic polynomial, we can obtain, we can see that whether the motion is critically damped, over damped or under damped, okay? So this is uh, the solution. Now we can apply the initial conditions and, and, and we can obtain the solution. I hope you can do it yourself. If you have any question, you can ask. For the other two cases, I have also included the examples Oh, uh, I assume that you, you can do those examples yourself. Now, <clears throat> a practical example of the daily life relate, related to these kind of motions is uh, modeling a motorcycle suspension system. Okay. Another example is modeling modeling motorcycle suspension system. So the example is 
a motorcycle weighs 204 pound motorcycle ka weight kitna hai weight oh, weight of m cycle motorcycle is 204 pound and we assume a rider weight is 180 lb rider yeah weight of rider likhte hain weight of rider who is mounting that uh, motorcycle is 180 degree 180 Uh, pound when the rider mounts the motorcycle the suspension compresses 4 inches okay what is this s is 4 okay um hmm क्या है कॉम्प्रेशन कॉम्प्रेशन ऑफ द सस्पेंशन सस्पेंशन आपने नोट किया होगा सबने लड़कों ने तो बाइक चलाया होगा कुछ गर्ल्स ने भी बाइक चलाया होगा डेफिनेटली बाकी कम से कम बैठी होंगी बाइक पे जब आप बाइक के ऊपर बैठते हैं तो डेफिनेटली वो थोड़ा सा नीचे हो जाता है ठीक क्योंकि टायर के साथ पिछले टायर के साथ और अगले टायर के साथ उसमें क्या होता है शॉक्स लगे होते हैं शॉक क्या होते हैं प्रेस हो जाते हैं दैट इज बेसिकली सस्पेंशन सिस्टम सो व्हेन द राइडर माउंट्स ऑन दैट मोटरसाइकिल वो शॉक्स प्रेस हो जाते हैं ठीक है तो स्प्रिंग मास बेसिकली उसमें एक स्प्रिंग मास सिस्टम है ठीक है उसके शॉक्स के अंदर क्या होता है स्प्रिंग ही होता है ना ठीक है तो वो कॉम्प्रेशन आ जाता है फोर फोर फीट फोर फीट है नहीं फोर फीट नहीं होगा यार इंचीज होगा फोर फीट मोटरसाइकिलोटी Negative two forty times the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so this is the damping force that suspension system exert on that uh, suspension. Uh, sorry, on that moving body. Set up a differential equation that models the behavior of motorcycle suspension system. Okay. अच्छा इसके लिए हमने एक differential equation क्या करनी है बनानी है. डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन क्या होगी वही होगी फ्री डैम मोशन की ठीक है एंड दैट इज एम डी स्केर एक्स बाय डी टी स्केर प्लस बेटा डी एक्स बाय डी टी प्लस के टाइम एक्स जीरो एम यहां पे क्या होगा हमें वेट गिवन है टोटल टोटल वेट हमारे पास टोटल वेट होना चाहिए ना तो टोटल वेट क्या होगा टू जीरो फोर प्लस वन एटी सो द डब्ल्यू इज वॉट 18 sorry not 180 plus 204 it is 384 384 and it is equal to mg so from here we can find m which is 384 divided by 32 uh, which is something uh, well well It's a twelve slug. Slug. You can see. These units are what they are. I hope you already know them. Okay. The next thing is. Uh, the next thing is. Okay. 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 The next This gives us F S is what K times S is equal to W is M G. Okay, we know M, which is twelve. We know G. We know K. We know S. S kya hai? Aapke pas four. 
okay but it should be in feet so it is 1 by 3 feet so you insert all these values here uh, and get k is equal to uh, k is equal to boom 1152 1152 because uh, this is m is 12 and that is 32 so wo ek badi aur yahan pe bhi 1 by 3 hai to to ja ke multiply hoga so it is 1152 k okay, the value of k is now our equation would become here m is 12 beta is uh, 240 and k is 1152. So this is our equation of motion. Now, the first part is gone. Now we, let us read the second part, the B part of this example. If the motorcycle takes a jump and land on ground, find the equation of motion of uh, the motorbike after the jump Assume that t is equal to zero, denote the time when the motorcycle first contacts the ground and motorcycle hits the ground with a velocity of 10 feet per second downward. This is the initial condition given. So, this is the suspension system. Cup check hoga, this is motorcycle. So, jump is the jump. So, this क्या होगा सस्पेंशन पे प्रेशर पड़ेगा या यू जंप करता है मोटरसाइकल व्हाटएवर द रीजन के उसने जंप किया जंप करके तो उसने लैंड करना है जब लैंड करना है तो वी हैव टू चेक कि उस सस्पेंशन सिस्टम पे कितना प्रेशर पड़ा ठीक है सो दैट वी कैन मेक दैट सस्पेंशन सिस्टम दैट मच स्ट्रांग कि वो उसका सस्पेंशन सिस्टम ब्रेक ना हो टूटे ना ठीक है तो uh, what is this case? If the motorcycle takes a jump, and when you jump like a motorcycle, so its compression is zero. It will not be zero. Because when it is in the air, so its wheel, the motorcycle's suspension system, its compression will not be zero. It will be in normal equilibrium position. Okay? So this is something you have to keep in mind. Uh, in that case, आपके पास जो displacement होगा, x of zero, x of zero would be uh, initial conditions को अगर हम discuss करें, तो x of zero is four inches. Why is this four inches? Because जब ground पे हम motorcycle, तो उसमें compression है four inches का. लेकिन जब हवा में है, तो compression नहीं रहेगा. Means वो उसकी जो equilibrium position है उससे four inch नीचे चला जाए। So initial जो time zero पे जो displacement होगा वो four inches होगा। और जो velocity होगी time zero पे वो downward उसने दी हुई है कि ten feet per second है। uh, Motorcycle when it, it hits the ground the velocity is at that time is ten feet per second downward। So x dash of zero is ten uh, feet per second okay agar isko convert kare to 1 by 3 feet aa jayega theek hai so these are our initial conditions ji beta can you explain x of 0 4 inches kyu hoga again x of 0 4 inches kyu hoga ji dekhiye jab aap motorcycle zameen pe hai for example khada hai to jab aap uske upar baithenge to suspension system kya hoga compress hoga उसने दिया हुआ है कि four inches compress हो जाता है compression से वो जो आ, suspension system है motorcycle का लेकिन जब वो air में है जब motorcycle ने when it took a jump जब air में है तो wheel का जो suspension system है वो compression उसकी खत्म हो जाएगी वो कितना displacement आ जाएगा उसका downward जितना compression हुआ हुआ था suspension system वो compression खत्म हो जाएगा ना क्योंकि अब air में है so it's four inches the compression hai ji hello uh, so like uh, so 
लाइक हवा जब कंप्रेशन पे जब वो था तो वेटिंग दैट एज इक्विलिब्रियम तो फिर जब वो लाइक हवा में होगा इट वुड गो फॉर नीचे यस डेफिनेटली ओके ओके इनिशियली जब राइडर मोटरसाइकिल पे ही वाज नॉट माउंटिंग दैट मोटरसाइकिल द सस्पेंशन सिस्टम वाज इन इक्विलिब्रियम ठीक है उसमें कोई कंप्रेशन नहीं था सस्पेंशन सिस्टम में लेकिन जब राइडर बैठ गया तो उसमें कंप्रेशन आया फोर इंच तो फिर वहां पे एक और इक्विलिब्रियम आया ठीक है लेकिन जब एयर में जाएगा इट मींस राइडर का जो वेट है उसका इफेक्ट खत्म हो जाएगा ठीक है क्योंकि टायर या जो सस्पेंशन सिस्टम है जब तक ग्राउंड के साथ वो अटैच नहीं होगा तो कॉम्प्रेशन नहीं होगा सस्पेंशन सिस्टम मोटरसाइकिल का क्योंकि अब एयर में है तो उसका कॉम्प्रेशन खत्म हो जाएगा तो वो उसका जो डिस्प्लेसमेंट होगा वो टाइम जीरो पे फोर इंच हो जाएगा ठीक है सो दैट इज द रीजन के एक्स ऑफ जीरो फोर इंच है और वेलोसिटी उसने गिवन दी हुई है क्वेश्चन में कि जब डाउनवर्ड वेलोसिटी व्हेन द बाइक हिट्स दैट ग्राउंड उस वक्त जो डाउनवर्ड वेलोसिटी है वो टेन फीट पर सेकेंड ठीक है नाउ और मैथमेटिकल मॉडल इज कंप्लीट दैट वी हैव This equation, along with x of zero is equal to one by three feet, and x dash of zero is ten uh, feet per second. So we have this mathematical model. We can solve it very easily because it's uh, an equation of uh, second order equation, which is linear, homogeneous with constant coefficients. Okay, we we find its roots. of characteristic polynomial and then we can solve this you would see that this is uh, this is over damped system theek okay. hai because the roots are real and distinct kyun kyunki jab aap motorcycle jump karta hai to thodi bahut oscillation hoti hai fir wo stable hota na aise to nahi hai ki wo oscillation usme hoti rehti hai nahi hoti kyun kyun nahi hoti kyunki usme jo frictional forces hain वो उसकी मोशन को इमीडिएटली स्टॉप करती हैं, ठीक है जो सस्पेंशन सिस्टम है वो बेसिकली एक सिलेंडर के अंदर क्या होता है जैसे इंजेक्शन नहीं लगता इंजेक्शन इंजेक्शन जब आप प्रेस करते हो तो ये पिस्टन टाइप का होता है उसके अंदर एक रबर होता है जो जब आप उसको प्रेस करें तो वो उसकी मोशन को दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ओवरली डैम्प सिस्टम ठीक है जब जब आप प्रेस करते हैं तो उसमें ऑसोलेशन नहीं आती वो एकदम से रुक जाती है क्यों क्योंकि उसमें जो फ्रिक्शन uh, फोर्स है वो बहुत ज्यादा होती है इसी तरह मोटरसाइकिल के सस्पेंशन सिस्टम के अंदर uh, जो पिस्टन टाइप होता है उसमें सिलेंडर के अंदर उसके आगे पीछे रबर होता है जब वो उसको प्रेस करता है सस्पेंशन सिस्टम को तो इमीडिएटली उसकी जो रिटार्डिंग uh, फोर्स uh, है वो इतनी ज्यादा होती है जो कि रिस्टोरिंग फोर्स से ज्यादा होती है इसलिए वो इमीडिएटली वो सस्पेंशन सिस्टम स्टेबल कर देता है मोटरसाइकिल ठीक है वो कंटिन्यूसली ऑसिलेट नहीं करता कंटिन्यूसली ऑसिलेट करता रहे तो आप जो राइडर होगा डेफिनेटली उसको वो उठा के बाहर फेंकेंगे सो दिस इज बेसिकली यू कैन से डेली लाइफ एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दीज काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम देर आर मेनी अदर एग्जाम्पल्स यू कैन हैव इनफैक्ट दीज काइंड ऑफ फिनमिना आर यूज टू मॉडल the suspension system of every vehicle even aeroplanes theek hai gaadiyon ki suspension system motorcycle ke suspension system isi uh, law pe base karte hain the next is uh, if you have any question you can ask me otherwise uh, i'm going to tell you one more thing in this lecture and then we'll stop still we have discussed two cases free undamped motion and free damped motion What is this word "free" here? Why is it here? Free means there are no external forces on the system. They are free from external forces. Free undamped motion means there are no external forces on the system, no frictional forces. Free damped motion means there are no external forces, but there are frictional forces on the system. Now we are going to discuss. forced oscillations or forced damped motions forced damped motions means uh, let me go back to
to one board one. Here again. Hmm. Yeah, um, we were discussing free damped motions. And this is basically the damping force. This is how damping force uh, we add into the mathematical model. Now we are going to discuss forced damped motion or forced oscillations. Or we call it forced uh, oscillations or uh, there's another name for this. It is uh, driven motion. Driven motion means we apply some external force in order to force that system uh, to be in motion, okay? To set that system in motion. Forced, forced means there are external forces. What could be those external forces? Means uh, uh, if uh, we, I told you that this, uh, this support is rigid. Okay. Now there, there is no motion in this support. Now, what if we start moving this support as well by using some external force? That will be your external force on the system, which exert on the system. Other forces could be, uh, in the case of motorcycle example, if there's a bump on the road, then that suspension system will experience a sudden force due to that bump. Okay? Definitely use the force, apply That is an external force, which can affect the motion of uh, uh, that, uh, the motion of that object suspended uh, with the string. Okay? So these are external forces. External forces, uh, they could be of different nature. They could be of different nature, but, here, it is assumed that this rigid support is, is oscillating upward and downward okay, with a certain amplitude and uh, with, with a certain, uh, you can say that uh, magnitude of that force. Okay? It is usually uh, assumed that this force which is denoted by usually what small f of t, hmm. which is usually denoted by small f of t, and it is uh, some constant times, uh, huh, some constant times alpha times cosine of omega t. This is a constant which gives you basically the magnitude of that force. You can see force zada hai, you can see hai. And this factor basically gives you uh, the oscillations, the, the, the motion upward and downward motion of this support. Ye, I mean, shah, ye kyun lete hai? Cosine of cosine ki motion kaise, kaise hoti? Oscillatory hoti na? Okay. Kyunke jab ab dekhe, uh, gaadi ya motorcycle jab chalta hai, Road cuper. So road may definitely kuch hongi impurities. This ki vaja se ye jo support hai, jo suspension system ko support kar rhi hai, wo support khud hilti hai. Wo uski motion kya hoti hai, upar nichi hoti hai na? Upward and downward. That is why we assume that the external force is kind of harmonic force, harmonic motion. Because suspension system, motorcycle ka ho, ya gaadi ka ho, ya aeroplane ka ho, uski suspension system, jis cheez se supported hai, wo support khud jo hai na, wo upward and downward motion hai uski due to uh, the road effect. So that's why it is always assumed that the external forces, uh, which is acting on that system, acting on that whole system, 
is also moving upward and downward. Okay, that this alpha constant may is basically, uh, you can say that uh, the strength of that force. Now, again, using the Newton's second law of motion, if we add this force on the right hand side, uh, what do we obtain? We need to add this force here, plus F of P in the Newton second law of motion, okay? If this is F of P, then the right hand side is no more a zero. And the right hand side becomes F of P here. Now, whenever we divide here throughout by M, it becomes F of P divided by M, okay? And then the right hand side becomes some other function, maybe you can call it capital F of T or some G of T, okay? Uh, where small F, capital F of T is equal to small F of T divided by M. Now, what is this? This is a second order linear non-homogeneous, non-homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which can be solved by using method of undetermined coefficients. Uh, I told I already told you, explained you what is the method of undetermined coefficients where when we have the right hand side non zero. Okay, how to solve it? Uh, I hope you can solve it, and I also hope that k. Is maybe ye three cases aayenge, ठीक है? उसमें क्योंकि इसका जो solution hoga, that would be sum of two solutions, a complementary solution and a particular solution. Complementary solution may again you teen cases hang. Okay. You can consider these three cases over dam, critical dam, and under dam system. So okay. uh, you can model any phenomena where there is an external force acting on the whole system. Okay. And then uh, you can model that phenomena, that, that problem. Really. So example of this thing is also included here. Look, in this case, a special case, this can also be possible. That here, we have said that this is a forced damped motion. In the same way, forced undamped motion can also be possible. Forced undamped motion means. आप सिर्फ एक्सटर्नल फोर्स को कंसीडर कर रहे हो, the the frictional forces are not considered in that case. In that case, what would happen? The beta would be zero. ठीक है, अगर beta zero हो जाएगा, तो फिर आपके पास force undamped motion ये वाला factor zero हो जाएगा. ये वाला factor zero होगा, तो आपके पास जो equation आएगी, d square x by dt square plus omega square x equal to f of t, this will be forced undamped motion. So you can uh, model the problems by using this situation as well. Force undamped motion. Here I have included here. And here there are some examples. You can see in examples. So force oscillations. Uh, what is this example? It is a mass of one slug stretches a spring two feet and comes to rest at equilibrium. The system is attached to a dash pot that imparts a damping force equal to eight times the instantaneous velocity of mass. We find the equation of motion if an external force is equal to F of T is equal to eight sine of 40. Either it is taken as cosine omega T, alpha cosine omega T or alpha sine omega T okay, is applied to the system beginning at the time zero. So I hope it is very, it would be easy for you you can model it, you can find the values of M, K, and then uh, beta. And the right hand side would, uh, is given as well. Right hand side F of T is given eight sine four T. And the initial conditions are given zero, zero. You can model this equation. I hope you can do it. Uh, if you don't understand anything, if you have any confusion in this example, you can ask me. Okay. 
It's a similar kind of example, which we did uh, for the previous case, except this time in this example, f of t is given, f of t is given uh, eight sine four t, okay? And the rest is uh, given mass, you can find m, you can find k, you can find beta. Uh, f of t is this, you put it here on the right hand side, you find the values of uh, uh, m, beta and k, you put it inside that equation and you can solve that equation uh, on the similar line. I hope that is sufficient for today. If you have any question, you can ask me. Sir, G. why have we added, added f of t? Uh, bon. Newton's second law of motion in the previous lecture. Mein. Uh, explained kiya tha. Newton's second law of motion kya hota hai? F is equal to ma. I hope you remember it. Yes. Uh, aap logo ne padha hoga kafi arsa pehle. Hmm? F is equal to ma. F is equal to ma. What is this law? It is basically it tells us that uh, to, to set a motion, to, to put up, put an object into motion, that object has a mass M. We, in order to, so, so sorry, the force required to set that object into motion is F. Okay. F is the force which is required to set a, an object okay, uh, into motion uh, with an acceleration A and mass of that object is M. Okay. Uh, simple words may have said that any body ko, kisi bhi cheez ko, uh, move karne ke liye, okay, with a certain acceleration, jo force required hogi, that can be calculated using this formula. Okay. Now, forces in this system pe kitne apply ho rahi? Forces kitni hai ispe? Uh, forces. F is equal to m a agar apply kare. Thikhe? F, forces kitni hai? Ek force aapke paas F s hai. Ek W hai. Or ek F c hai. Or ek small f of t hai. Ye sari kiske equal hongi iska sum? M A K equal होगा, okay? So ये जो भी object है, इसको इस इसको move करने के लिए at an acceleration A, the mass of object is M. What is the force required? Sum of all these forces. And this is equal to what? This is equal to F. ठीक है? तो अब यहाँ पे आपके पास a क्या है? It is d square x by dt square. A की जगह हम लिख सकते हैं ना? D square x by dt square. ठीक है? और f s क्या है? Minus k x. Minus k x. W क्या है? M g. F c क्या है? Uh, minus beta minus beta dx by dt or f of t kya hai? it is alpha cos ya sin t okay. alpha cos omega t okay. lekin yahan pe ek aur force hoti hai uh, kaun si jo mg ko yahan se uh, Eliminate करती थी कौन सी थी? Previous lecture आप देखेंगे तो आपको यहाँ पे वो समझ आएगा कि mg यहाँ से क्यों eliminate करते हैं? ठीक है? Last time मैंने ये explain किया था. Okay, thank you. ठीक है? Uh, any other question? Okay, if you don't have any question, it's sufficient for today, I think. Uh, in the next lecture, we shall start a new topic, which is power series. Uh, you can ask me any question in the next lecture if you don't understand anything.
uh, today. In the next lecture, there will hopefully there will be a quiz as well. So. To get yourself prepared for the quiz in the next lecture. Okay, then see you in the next lecture. Take care. Allah Hafiz.